What's up everybody, Matt Moran here for another car review. This is of course the 2018 Lexus LC500. Huge thanks to Lexus for providing us with this awesome LC500 to review for you guys today. Also, huge thanks to the Automotive Video Association for arranging this car and 11 other awesome cars and SUVs for the first ever Automotive Video Awards, which brings six of the best car reviewers and video and myself together to decide which is the best performance car and performance SUV of the year. So about the LC500, well, man, what a looker this thing is. I mean, it's just beautiful from every single angle, especially here in this bright, uh, darker red color. It just, man, is this thing uh, very fetching to look at it's just ah, oh, I mean the front is just so elegant it's you know this is one of the first cars that actually looks like the concept car and I gotta give a huge thumbs up to Lexus for even doing this and making it so bold it's just so beautiful from every single angle I mean you have that uh, grill that kind of slopes in towards the bottom and these very high-tech looking headlights uh, with this signature little swoosh that uh, Lexus has and then coming down to the sides here I love you know even the side mirrors there are two tones so the the top is painted black so it kind of fades away and and it has a really cool look to it. And then you have the kind of disappearing C-pillar uh, styling going on there towards the back. You have the carbon fiber roof on this thing. Um, and then uh, out towards the back, you have those very cool taillights that you know angle downward and just look so awesome. And overall, I mean, just every single angle. You can't find a bad angle. You can't find bad lighting. No matter where you see this thing uh, from whatever angle, it still looks amazing. It is one of the best looking cars on the market today, in my opinion. Um, it is just absolutely absolutely striking. Right, so the interior of the 2018 Lexus LC500, well, it really matches the outside with being very futuristic and cool looking. Um, but anyway, first things first, sitting down in these seats, really nice, comfortable uh, bucket seats here. have Alcantara in the center, and then on the outside, it's leather, and they're just really comfortable seats, but they really hug you in well. There's not adjustable bolstering, only adjustable lumbar, um, but the bolsters are great, especially if you're on the thinner side like myself. Um, they're fairly snug, even a little more so than I was even expecting out of this car um, but they feel really great great torso support and even the thigh bolstering is really nice and snug and just fits really well again if you're a thinner guy if you're a little bit on the wider side I'm sure they'd still fit fairly well but um, they're just they feel really good next to the steering wheel in the LC 500 which is really nice um, I love you know you have the stitching on the airbag cover here uh, it's a really nice just round wheel great nine and three grip nice thickness to it too nice little ten and two notches uh, you have a a few basic buttons on it here um, that feel pretty nice as well. Fairly typical of Lexus, you know, all, the, all their other products. But you have these very nice large metal paddles as well here in the LC500 that just uh, feel really nice and they're within reach, uh, nice and close here. And overall, they're just really well placed. And this wheel is just is a really great looking wheel too. Gauges in the LC500 are similar to stuff that like you see in the RCF and whatnot. Are fantastic gauges. They've kind of trickled down from the LFA supercar, and they are so cool. I still love them. They still look fantastic with a nice large tachometer there in the middle, and then you have your digital uh, speedometer there as well. And then it's just it's very minimalistic in the way that it looks. There aren't you know any other huge big analog gauges. It's all digital. You have the other little auxiliary gauges there on the left and the right of that big tachometer. And then if you do want to have more information such as media or or, you know other things there you can you know have it shift and it actually shifts over for you and then you have you know an additional little uh, menu there you can you know sift through all kinds of different uh, stuff there and uh, so nice to have that but if you don't want that you don't need it it just hides away then you just have the basics and it's so uh, simplistic and concise and I love that about it and then in addition to uh, that little screen on the left you also have uh, some additional information you can scroll through there in the middle of the digital uh, tachometer there and so you can have uh, you know, like your gear position, uh, your fuel economy, all those types of basic things. You can also do like, like a G meter and other performance metrics there as well. And overall, a great gauge cluster. And uh, whenever you do the different driving modes, it'll also change character. And so it'll get more and more aggressive depending on how sporty uh, your driving mode is set up. And they just are so exciting to look at. But I mentioned those driving modes. It's very cool the switches to uh, go into those modes. Um, to go sport, sport plus, or comfort and eco, you have this little, uh, I guess, knob that comes out here out of the uh, gauge cluster and that's how you switch that and it's again very futuristic and cool looking on the left hand side here you have another toggle for turning off trash control or putting in
into snow mode, which is good to have as well. Um, but everything else is just really so futuristic in this interior. I love coming over to the center here, you have this swooping line and this very widescreen display that looks very futuristic as well. Um, and uh, you know, then you have an analog clock there just for a little bit of additional class as well. Um, but I love how you have this, just this textured uh, look going around the, the rest of the uh, dashboard there, and it's really cool. And even just things like the door handles, the door poles here, um, those just kind of emerge out of nowhere. And it's just, again, another kind of concept car looking thing. I just, I, all these little touches, just the swooping lines here on the doors, everything looks like it's out of a concept car in so many ways. And it's just so cool they actually were able to bring all this stuff to production. But anyway, getting back to uh, this infotainment screen and stuff up here, it's a very widescreen display, similar to and set up to some of the other Lexuses, uh, but I think it's new for 2018 with some of the menus and whatnot. And they've kind of refined it. Um, and it's now no longer, at least in the LC500, controlled by the little mouse cursor that you used to have. Now it's just a, a laptop style touchpad here to, you know, kind of sift through the menus and stuff. And it's fairly precise. It takes some practice and you got, definitely have to take a little while to get used to it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's good with, you know, the radio and stuff, the maps and all that are average, you know, nothing over the top. Um, and I really wish there was Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but Lexus and Toyota refuse to put that stuff in their products. And for me, um, to have a good infotainment system, you've got to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that is one thing that I dislike about uh, the infotainment in the interior, but that is basically the only thing I dislike. Everything else is just so cool looking. Coming down to the climate controls here, these very smooth metal buttons here to toggle you know, your auto climate control with a little display there. And then uh, coming over to the uh, right-hand side here, you have a very nice and solid feeling uh, volume knob that is just, oh, it just feels so great. And then you have these uh, seek and track and tune um, little toggles here. That are the, the tune is actually a scroll wheel, um, but it's just this nice uh, knurled metal finish that's just really great. And that's basically it. So very uncluttered and simplistic. And overall, they did a great job here with this interior. As far as storage space in the LC500, it's okay. Uh, you know, coupes, it's always kind of hit or miss, and this one is kind of limited. So first off in the doors here, you have a map pocket um, that doesn't have a bottle holder, uh, but you can fit, you know, some decent stuff in there. It's still very long. Um, coming over to the center here, you have a single cup holder um, that is, uh, you know, a good uh, size cup holder, and, you know, works. And then coming back here, um, you have this center armrest, which uh, can slide forwards or backwards. You can cover up the additional cubbies here, or you can, like I said, slide it back and then you have what is kind of a second cup holder but it doesn't have any notches or anything to really hold anything in firmly um, but I guess that works as a cup holder otherwise it's just an additional cubby there now um, but really you only have one honest cup holder in this vehicle which is a little bit of again uh, something I'm not a huge fan of I wish that they had actually made this a real second cup holder um, this center armrest though is very nice and uh, you know covered in this great leather material it's fairly soft feels good but anyway you open that up and then you have uh, two USB jacks an auxiliary jack and a power outlet in there and it's a good amount of uh, space again not huge not super deep or wide um, but enough to fit you know your sunglasses cell phone all that kind of stuff with ease no problem whatsoever in there and um, so overall a pretty good amount of space again for a coupe like this. Backseat space in the LC500 um, is actually usable. It's it's very tight, uh, you know, for people that are um, average uh, size like myself. I'm five foot nine. Me sitting behind myself, uh, it's, it's nice, you know, the seat does automatically uh, go forward to help get in and out of the back seat there. But anyway, uh, me sitting behind myself, I have, my legs are like really not squished hard, but they're firmly in place there. I don't really have any wiggle room whatsoever. Um, and then I actually have to slide down so that I have enough headroom because um, otherwise I mean my head is right up against the glass regardless uh, but I do have to like, hunch over a little bit so you don't have a lot of uh, headroom there but again that's because of this beautiful shape and the sloping roof line and so I think it's a fine concession to make children would be great back there smaller people um, but other than that um, you know it's basically unusable but it's good to have an additional uh, you know area to throw things if you need to back there and so I'm glad they do have a back seat trunk space in the LC500 is a little bit of a disappointment as well. It's very shallow, um, and that's I wasn't expecting it to be so shallow like that. So because of that, uh, you don't have a lot of space. You can maybe fit one normal size suitcase in there, and that might even be a squeeze. Uh, certainly a couple duffel bags will fit in there easily because you do have a, a wide space there. It's just that you know you don't have a lot of clearance with your height. Like I said, it's good you do have a back seat here that is you know a good size, so you can throw uh, extra bags back there, and that certainly does work. Um, 
but it would be nice if you could easily fit two suitcases in the trunk there, you know, that are normal size. I mean, maybe two carry-on approved uh, suitcases would fit back there, something small like that, um, but that's about it. So I wish there was a little more trunk space. All right, so start up and go for a drive. The LC500 is a very cool new key here for Lexus. It's got a nice smooth leather feel to it. Nice metal on the sides. Uh, you know, just some basic buttons there on the back. Anyways, of course, keyless entry and push button starts. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button. And it really roars to life. It really like revs up every time you start it. And I love that. All right, so setting off in the 2018 Lexus LC500. Well, the first thing you notice uh, is uh, it's actually pretty good visibility. Uh, it's just, again, you feel like you're in just such a like a sporty vehicle. It's just, it's awesome. Uh, you know, you have a heads up display here as well. I forgot to mention with the whole gauge cluster being so awesome on its own, you have a heads up display, which is also really cool and chock full of information. But anyway, visibility in the LC500 is great. You have a very good, good view forward. The hood just drops down very nicely so you can see forward very well. View out of the sides is great with a B pillar that's way far back there and well out of your way so very easy to see out of there and view out of the back window is also really great uh, with you know it's uh, pretty close to the rearview mirror here so uh, you can see out of it very well and it's amazing how smooth and refined it is here in the comfort mode I mean you get a little bit of road noise on rougher roads like this but I mean I hardly feel anything transmitted into the cabin I mean it's so smooth and feels very luxurious so far we'll go uh, into the sport plus mode here leave it in automatic and let's uh, turn down on the straighter here and see how how it does. Here we go. seconds for these things so again not slow by any means you're all you're running it all through a 10 speed automatic transmission as well um, which is a uh, you know a lot of gears it's this very uh, you know cool high-tech uh, transmission they have here in these new Lexuses and it seems to do a really good job and as I'm slowing down to a stop here the brakes uh, have a really nice bite right at the top uh, and they seem to be a little bit on the uh, touchy side though too which is great for you know a sporting vehicle like this listen to that Oh, it's fantastic. You get so much induction sound, but you also do hear some of the exhaust and oh, it sounds so good. Man, man. And this, the manual shifting in this, it's pretty quick, uh, <laughs> I gotta say. And it, it skips gears though sometimes, like it just went from fifth to third. I think because there's 10 gears to deal with and it's so in sport mode here it wants to try and give you somewhat normal gear ratios and gear spacing so I think that's why it's skipping around here but man this thing is exciting to drive though I mean I just look I'm just like tapping the gas and I instantly get a leap forward wow this, this thing is great and especially in sport plus mode here on the few corners I've gone around so far it really feels nice too Listen to that! And some more. <laughs> Activating the trash control there. It uh, definitely wants to break those tires loose. Oh man, this thing sounds awesome. I was not expecting to hear this much sound, especially in this Ford Plus mode. It really. Oh, this thing is quick too. I know the numbers don't seem astronomical in these crazy days we're living in of high horsepower stuff, but this thing flies. I mean, it's not super light either though. These are around 4,200 pounds. So, um, you know, it's got a decent amount of heft to accelerate here, but good grief, it doesn't feel like it. It feels at least 500 pounds lighter than that so far. But uh, we'll go around some more corners here and uh, see how it handles some more. <laughs> That time I didn't even pull the paddle for the downshift, it just gave me the downshift because it's like, yep, you need some higher RPMs in your life. Like that too. Thank you, I appreciate that. 
this thing is, man, this transmission is really tuned to be fun. Listen to that, it's just giving me these awesome touches. I could put it into sport mode and it'd probably chill out a little bit, but it is really like, all right, you wanna go nuts? We'll give you all the performance you want. And it is plenty, plenty of power. I, this thing feels way faster than the numbers suggest. Uh, way faster. And the handling is also really good. I'm on a couple more quarters here now, and uh, it does feel pretty good. It feels very flat plant that there isn't any body roll or anything like that. I mean, it feels really razor sharp. There isn't a ton of feeling for the steering wheel, though. That's the only thing. It has a good weight to it, um, but I'm not, it feels a little numb. Like, I should be feeling more vibration and things like that, and I'm not. I'm sure they wanted to keep it refined and whatnot, and, you know, with a lot of these electric racks these days, uh, that's just kind of, uh, you know, one of the things that you kind of miss out on a little bit is some of the feel. But this still, still feels plenty fun. But we're behind some traffic, so we'll put it back into comfort mode here and just kind of sample how this thing does. It's just a cruiser on a back road. And and it's very comfortable, it's sedate and quiet now. I mean, listen to it. You can't hardly even hear it. So one minute it's rah, the next minute it's just like da da da. You can just play some uh, classical music and just cruise on along. It's, <laughs> it's really got a great uh, double personality there in that regard. And uh, you know, other people are saying that this car is kind of soft and it's you know not quite as, uh, you know, it's more of a grand tour than a sports car. And I don't get that so far. I mean, it feels really fast. It feels like it handles really, really well. I mean, obviously I'm on public roads. I'm not pushing it. I'm not on a racetrack or anything. But, you know, at, you know, six or seven, eight tenths, um, it feels plenty poised, plenty sharp. Um, and you still have the comfort. You have these striking good looks. Like, I'm failing to see any shortcomings in the way this car drives. It's like really fantastic in basically every single way. I can't think of a single thing to complain about. Um, so, I mean, those that are saying it's soft, I don't feel any kind of lean or roll. It's uh, really flat. Um, I don't I don't think it feels soft, honestly. It feels really sharp, but uh, yeah, I think it's definitely, you know, these go for around 100 grand. I think it's definitely worth the money. For one, I think the looks alone, it's worth the money. This is a 100 grand looking car for sure. Um, but then, you know, the interior is still very nice. Like I said, there's a few shortcomings on the interior and storage space and stuff as far as using as a daily driver or, you know, a long trip kind of vehicle. Um, but it's, uh, it's really, I don't know, I'm really enjoying this thing a lot. I like this one a good bit. Uh, if I had a hundred grand to spend, I would be very tempted by one of these, that's for sure. But yeah, let's go back into Sport Plus mode and... RPMs, this thing has such a nice growl to it. But anyway, let's uh, try and sample this handling a little bit more as best we can here, you know, at reasonable speeds. Um, but it's just, yeah, it feels so tight to me. It really feels great. One thing I will say is this automatic is not the smoothest. You know, like I was in third, it was a medium with a downshift, but then upshift. It's, it's a little, uh, you can even hear it, you know, it's like, all right, one minute it's the, this RPM, the next minute it's, it's kind of just a little clunky sometimes too, where I upshifted from third to fourth, and it kind of, I can actually feel it and hear it clunk into gear. Um, so, I mean, this 10 speed's pretty new, I'm sure it'll get better, you know, with time, with software updates or whatever, but it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, the 10 speeds, I mean, I'm sure it gets phenomenal feel economy on the highway and stuff like that, but I like that even in the lower gears here, they're spaced out fairly normally, so you're not like in seventh gear at like 35 miles an hour. It's, uh, you know, very normal. I'm in fourth gear, you know, doing like 50 miles an hour, and I'm spinning, you know, over 3,000 RPMs, which is totally normal and what you would expect with most like, you know, six or seven speed gearboxes. But going around some more corners here, pushing it a little bit more now, and um, it just, it keeps feeling good to me. I can't, I'm trying to be like, all right, is there any lean? Is there any like, does it feel heavy? It doesn't feel heavy. It feels fairly light on its feet. I mean, no, it doesn't feel like a Miata or anything, but I mean, it does feel really athletic. Yeah, overall, I'm just, wow, I'm so blown away and impressed by this thing. It's so much better than I was expecting it to be, honestly. And um, 
Yeah, there's a lot to like here with the LC500. But yeah, now at highway speeds and comfort mode, you do get some road noise on these rougher roads. Um, it's not the quietest of rides, you know, uh, but it is still very, very nice to just cruise in. Um, it's so relaxed and comfortable. Uh, but overall, I am so in love with the LC500. This thing is so amazing in every single parameter. Um, I really can't find any fault with it, other than, like I said, some of the stuff in the interior and the lack of uh, trunk space and whatnot. But as far as driving stuff goes, this thing is really a 10 out of 10 in my book. I can't find a single thing to really complain about. Um, but yeah, so anyway, huge thanks once again to Lexus for providing me with this very nice LC500 to review for you guys today. Let me know your thoughts about the LC500 in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.